Hello, good evening, and welcome to today's edition of Realities, A Moment with Susie. I hope everybody has had a lovely week, and they're going to have a lovely weekend too. I plan to, here in the UK, the sun is shining, so we need to make the most of that. Um, I'm going to say a big massive thank you, because um, on Wednesday, I think it was, on my Facebook, I asked... Um, my friends to give me some suggestions for some topics that we should discuss and I got really good feedback both um, on the status itself and inbox and this week I've decided I'm going to use one of those topics and that topic is African teenagers, violence and gangs and with me to discuss this topic today is my good friend Femi Okuntubo who is the publisher of Trumpet newspaper Femi, thank you for coming. Thank you very much, Susie. Oh, no, thank you. And also, I have my good old friend Edith again. Hello. Thank you so much for coming. You know, You're I welcome. love your energy. up and go energy. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But no, um, like I said, I did um, make a request and people gave me a few topics to discuss. And this was one of them that actually hit me because I thought it's really true because there's so much black on black crime out there. There's so much knife, knife crime, guns, all involving, I'm talking about the ones that involve teenagers. And every time there is an incident, most, I'm not gonna say every, but most times there is an incident, I feel, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that an African child is either one of the perpetrators or a victim. Now, the saddest one for me well, I mean, all of them are sad, but the one that really brings, you know, really, really, really does make me feel sad was the one that happened at Victoria Station. And I think, I think that was 2011, when a gang of kids was seen to attack a 15-year-old boy, all of them around the same age, in the middle of a busy train station, 5 p.m. with commuters coming from work. Nobody done nothing. He was stabbed to death. And... When the corporates were caught and when they were um, finally um, brought before the courts, the main corporates, which was sad enough, four of them were Africans. And out of these four that were Africans, three were boys and one was a girl. So that means that when, when, we, when I'm talking about youths, violence and gangs, we're talking about girls and boys, not just boys. I mean, I don't know. Word on the street is that girls are even more vicious than boys nowadays. Mm -hmm. I don't know how true that is. But the first question I'm going to throw at you guys this evening, and I'll throw it at Femi since you're nearer. <laughs> Edith, no offence. But the first question I'm going to ask you guys is, why do you think so many African youths get caught up in the gang culture in the UK today? I think it's um, a combination of reasons. Uh, one of the very first things one needs to highlight is the fact that there's a problem with the society in which um, our youths actually live in. Um, you've got a society where in the name of political correctness um, certain values um, have been thrown, you know, have been thrown to the dogs, so to speak. You have a situation where there's not too much respect for constituted authority. There isn't much respect for you know, for peers, there's not much respect for even people who are older than you. Um, and therefore, people feel that the way of life is to go down this, you know, unfortunate path of, you know, disrespect. Yeah. And that sort of builds into a bigger thing. Um, there's also a bit of peer pressure involved as well. Yeah. Uh, people want to belong. Um, people want, you know, they believe that if they're not really, you know, if they don't really, if they're not really part of a gang or if they're not really part of um, what others are doing, that, you know, they're, they're not bought, so to speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they're not really in it. Yeah. And I think those are some of the things uh, which I think um, has really, you know, gone astray um, and uh, that's caused, you know, these problems. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. And I agree 100% with you there, Femi. Edith, do you have anything to add to that? But why I, is yeah, I, I agree with everything he's saying. I also think that the government itself is actually, you know, guilty of those things because mm -hmm. you've removed most most of the power from the parents, yeah. who 
the law clearly states are responsible for those children. But if you prevented me from disciplining my child at home, and then my child gets into trouble, can you really come and harass me at home for what my child has done outside? No, you can't. Because you can't have it both ways. It's like having your, your cake and eating it, isn't yeah, it? Definitely. You can't have it both ways. Because yeah. at the end of the day, if I'm responsible, I'm the queen of my castle, and I make the rules for my children in my house, yeah. then they have to follow those rules because they are my dependents, and they also depend on me to provide for them and yeah. to protect them. Mm -hmm. So that alone should instill a, a sense of respect for me as the parent, yeah. as the elder of the house, yeah. and as the matriarch in general. Yeah. But then again, the government comes to tell you, oh, if your mom smacks you or does whatever you you don't like or you take exception to, you can dial this stupid number and then we will come and defend your rights. So <clears throat> how can you therefore reprimand parents yeah. when you find children are being arrested and stuff like that? And they always make the difference, isn't it? When it's a white kid, nobody keeps going like, is Irish or is Scottish or is whatever. Yeah. But when it's a black kid, suddenly the race is important. Oh, is an African, is a Caribbean youth, is all this and all this, a Nigerian, is a Ghanaian, is an Angolese, is a Somalian, you know? Yeah. Black on black crimes. They always have statistics. Funny enough, they always seem to manifest these When you say that, statistics for I don't say, I don't think, I, I don't know, maybe I've not heard it. I don't think I've heard anything white on white crime before. I don't really? think I've heard that expression being used. I don't know. Maybe yeah, but I there is a lot of yes, but there is a lot of white. Yes, no, white, no. But my question crime. is: yeah. Do we have? Because I know they talk about statistics on black and black yes. crime, and there's a lot of stuff in the media about black and black crime. Yes, black on black. But I don't see so much as in white on white crime being discussed. Yeah, um, it's not something that really comes up, you yeah. know. So and um, why? There's now a specific focus on oh, saying black that black. certain things are black on black. Yes, exactly. Is that, you know, I, I can't really understand. Crime is crime. You know, whether it's Regardless by color white, of black or pink, you know, it doesn't exactly. really matter. Mm. Exactly. But no, guys, thank you so much for that. Um, I just want to remind um, our viewers that this is a live interactive show. Um, and we need you to ring in, have this discussion with us. We can't do it by ourselves. We want to hear everyone's um, views, everyone's you know ideas on it. The number is going to be scrolled at the or put on the bottom of the page. But while I'm while I'm saying that, do you know what, Edith? Mm -hmm. Like I've said a number of times, I worked as a qualified social worker for a number of years, and before then, I worked within res um, um, within residential care with teenagers as well. Now, one thing I'm going to say is there is a misconception mm. around smacking of kids. Mm -hmm. There is no law yes, against smacking. smacking of kids. So there's nothing to say that you cannot smack your child. There is a law around how you smack your child. Mm. There's also, I find, a misconception, and of which I don't blame people because I think rumors, mm. stories, always precede the truth mm -hmm. in life. And I think it's the same with social work. And I feel the need to actually defend social workers because I've actually been in that field. I feel the need to defend them. Because as a social worker, I know that when I was a social worker, a child will not just um, ring and say, my mum beat me. And then social services say, right, come here. We're gonna look after you from now on. Hello, miss, what happened? It doesn't work like that. It works, it's basically, a child makes a complaint um, that they have been um, hit by the parent. Social services now want to know in what way they were hit. Mm -hmm. Now, social services, the last thing they ever want to do, and not because of what they want to do, because it costs a lot of money to put kids in foster care. Mm -hmm. It drains their funds. So basically, the first thing they aim to do is put a child in the care of either another parent or they, they will give you different options. The parent that done, if it was just one parent that done the beating and if the beating was very severe, too severe to, to actually discuss, they would ask that parent if they could leave the home or could that child stay with a relative or could that child stay with a friend. It's if the child has nowhere else to go or the child is absolutely refusing and they think that if they place the child there, they will put themselves at risk by running out onto the street. And I think that is the thing that a lot of kids hold on to because they know that that word force 
is not there. Do you get me? That they would now place that child into the care, but they actually do try and avoid. But I think that I want to ask, and you've kind of answered it, the why have things gotten so bad? And I say why have things gotten so bad because I know that parents can discipline your kids, but I know that there's so many parents out there that shy away from disciplining their kids because, like you said, they're scared. Social services will come knocking on the door. Well, do you guys agree with that? Or do you guys think that there's some... But, but there, 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 is a valid, just gone back. there is a valid basis for those fears, isn't it? Because, I mean, you've, we've seen incidents in the news, in the media, of maybe white people smacking their children. And even if they go to court, they seem to come back home with their children. But the moment an, a black person or somebody of African descent does it, you see that they're demonized in the newspapers. I'm sorry to say, maybe there are some good social service workers there who think that, look, okay, maybe this incident happens. I need to in investigate the reason why the parent did it. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe there is no past history of the parent ever hitting that child. So therefore, to me, the child doesn't need, you know, to be displaced or taken to court or whatever it is. Yeah. But I have seen overzealous social service workers. Oh, yeah. I'm you see what you mean? They and they yeah. are the ones who create the problems because, I mean, they come, they come to people's home with these idealistic views. Yeah. Of, like Brutus, you know, yeah. and in Julius Caesar, they come with these idealistic views that, you know, or oh, children are little angels, they're little miracles, and even if they do something, it's not that bad. Let me tell you something. You start to build your conscience from the moment you take the first breath on earth. That's yeah. where you start to build mm -hmm. your conscience. And I'm afraid to say to some parents that you have to be realistic about what you've got in your house. What your child, who, yes, your, who, who your, your child, child is, actually is fun yeah. fundamentally. Mm -hmm. Because yes, they're cute when they're little babies and everything else. The moment they start talking and walking, then you see other things. <laughs> other traits. In other the traits child. Sl slowly yeah. coming up. And African parents, you know, we, we, it's not that we're not like, we're not really like white people when it comes to loving our children. We don't need to Emotional, tell our children they... every day, oh, I love you, I love you, I love you. Stop doing the Karen Carpenter. Oh, I over do. It. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, but you know what I mean? Like Karen Carpenter, because she went on, she, she became anorexic because her mother had not said it enough. But the woman was killing herself being your manager, traveling with you everywhere for your music career. You know what I mean? And then you decide that you want to half die because it's anorexia. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, well, well, die already, won't you? Because, I mean, if I don't love you, why am I doing this? You know what I mean? I'm 50-something, I'm 60-something. So basically, why what, am I following? So basically, what you're saying is that the mother showed her love in yes. what way she could offer that love. Yes. But, and so you're saying that African parents, they show love to their kids. They don't need to but voice, it on, voice daily, it on a daily basis. They don't. But you see, because that's that's where the difference, the balance comes. Because when you talk to your Caucasian friends yeah. about, you know, your parents and stuff like that, you hear their conversations and you start to think, mm, that's a bit bizarre. I don't have that type of relationship with my own parents. You know, that sort of thing. My, my, my mom, I love them, but I fear them. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? There has, you know? there has to be that fear. Exactly. What? No, no. You know, when you say yeah. that, I could remember there was this program on TV. I've forgotten what it's called. It's called something parenting. Yeah. I mean, come off it, you know, there's one thing, and I, I hope I don't sound racist, but there's something about we black people. Yeah. We don't allow cameras in our home and watch <laughs> our dirty <laughs> linen outside yeah. for yeah. everyone to see. Yeah. And so this camera was in this person's house, and next thing I saw the child, and next thing the child picked something up and threw it at the father, was like, you cow, I hate you. you and my daughter turned around and looked at me and said, wow. whoa, mommy, <laughs> I would never try that. <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, you damn well won't have a bite. <laughs> there you go. You see what you mean? Yes. Sir. So, then, but Femi, what do you? Think? What I was going to add to, um, you know, to all to all of this discussion and you know to what um, Edith said is that number one, parents need to bear in mind there are that there are so many ways in which you can discipline a child. So you don't even have to go physical to be able to discipline you a need child. To be creative. You know, exactly. Create. I, I really like the way <laughs> you said Creative. To, you know, so I, you know, it could be. In fact, I had a situation when, you know, just this afternoon, you know, yeah. with one of my uh, sons where 
um, you know, he's done something, you know, not showing enough respect to his older brother. Mm -hmm. Now he's coming from the angle that, well, yeah, he's, it's his brother, you know, he doesn't have to, um, you know, yeah. show respect and all that stuff, you know. And I'm saying, well, he's your brother, he's older than you. Because again, with the African culture, you're, you're, you're taught Mm. To show respect to Your people, elders. even if they're a day older than you. Exactly, them. yes. So, and then I had to now seize his, um, you know, his Blackberry phone and his, um, you know, and his um, uh, um, Peter, Google Nexus or yeah. whatever yeah. it is. <laughs> and I said, well, you're not having it for the next time. Sorry, week. can I ask, how old is he? He's uh, 12. Exactly, you well, know. at least you were installing. Uh, a form you know, of discipline. Absolutely. And him, because, and, and this is what I think a lot of parents um, lose focus on. Kids, once they start talking and walking, mm. kids can be very manipulative. Yes. And they know how to win you on side. Mm. And if they can work out that a little wimp or a cry or mm. a little moan is getting you, oh, darling, what's wrong? <laughs> They're on it. They're yeah. at it. Yeah. Install discipline in these kids. Let them think, don't, you know, I, you know, I just, I don't know, I struggle with it. I struggle with parents' creativity when they're parenting nowadays. Yeah, but it depends it's not, because hitting is yeah, not, no. It depends on no, the no, child no, but still, well. from young, you have mm -hmm. to install yeah. it from them, from very young. Once you can install it from them, very young, and you let your child, your child first has to learn to respect you as a mother or a father. Yes, they yeah. do, but then again, how and other siblings. Yeah, but that's easy to say, but how do you explain serial killers? Because sometimes when you look at the parents, the parents will tell you, no, I didn't know that my, my child was no, like no, this. Serial killers no, 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 but seriously, different. seriously, different. Some, some parents have been shocked at the fact that they found out through the newspaper but that yeah. their children are serial killers. Yeah, but I just you see what I mean? But they will tell you that, but it was so lovely when he was. Younger. But he did. He was this is what I'm saying. I didn't hit him. Serial I didn't hit him. You see what you no. mean? Serious killers, I think they're people that have mental health issues. No, but totally you different. think they have mental health issues, but it's actually been catalogued that they have very high IQs. To kill, you have to be. You have to no, be. Yeah. What do you know? Wait, let's see what. Yeah, but you see, I think what we need to bear in mind here is that even the example of a serial killer is yeah. probably at the high end of the scale. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but there are so many parents. That would say that, that they didn't believe their children went to gangs. Yeah, they, they couldn't. It. Yeah, they couldn't mm -hmm. believe that their children could stand and so on. Yeah. Now I was talking about my son. As far as I'm concerned, he's just gone into secondary school. You know, in a totally different area. Yeah. I'm beginning to, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm seeing one or two traits that I think is probably, you know, maybe there are things he has seen in school, maybe from some mm -hmm. of his friends. And that's why I think parents need to be very observant yeah. to be able Thank to, you. you know, there's a difference between school, you know, and home. Mm -hmm. And a lot can be done from home, which can be taken back into, into the school. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, what you need to bear in mind as well is, and I say, you know, it's got something to do with, this, uh, with the society that we live in. Living, You've yeah. got a situation mm -hmm. where at home, uh, you know, um, you're, t you're teaching them something. And at school, it's a total, you know, it's a slightly it's different, different way scenario. of teaching. Yeah. I'll give you a typical example. Back home, uh, or based on the African culture, normally, you know, if, even if someone is having a go at you or telling you off, or if an older person is telling you off, you're not really meant to sort of look their back straight in the face or, or in the eyes <laughs> or anything of that sort. Whereas if you do that down here, it looks as if you're actually timid. Yeah. yeah. You know, it looks like you're a coward. So what there has to be a bit of a balancing act there. Sometimes, you know, children talk, you know, back in Africa, you're not really meant to sort of talk back or even mm -hmm. respond. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, yes, you can explain you yourself. By the same time. So yeah. there needs to be the right balance there. And we've got to remember that as Africans, we've got our culture which I believe has helped our society to, to, to a certain extent. Where we think, where I think um, things are being, you know, um, missed is where, where we're saying, well, yeah, they're in England or they're in the United Kingdom, they're, you know, that's the way of life. Parents are not getting the right balance. They're not getting the right balance. They're going to the extreme. Instead of finding somewhere in the middle, they're going right to the extreme. So it's like, yeah, oh, my child's different because my child was born you know, in London, they're not going to be the same. Like, I went to one of my friend's houses um, last week, about three weeks ago, and I got to the house, and her 10-year-old daughter came out. Now, in my culture, in our culture, family, if someone's older than you, you kneel down as a lady to greet them, and as a boy, there's something that you do. 
And I walked in, and this girl walked in, since she was eight years old. She knelt down in front of me. I nearly had a heart attack. <laughs> I couldn't believe what I was saying. I was like, what? I was like, okay. And the next thing, her 16-year-old son walked in and greeted me, good morning, auntie, and stooped down. Mm. And I was frustrated, yeah? Mm. And I said, oh, my days. I said, babes, did you see what your son just said? Yes, that is how I brought them up. Mm -hmm. And then I thought about it myself and I thought, hmm, if I had known about that, mm. I would have told my daughters about it as well. But if I tell them to do it now, they're going to start laughing. Because yeah, they're not at an age. I know what you mean. But you know what? Yeah. Give me a challenge, someone. By next year, I'll get them doing it. Really? <laughs> well, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I wish you best of luck. I wish myself, but I'm yeah. I'm an African, yeah. really, but I don't, there are certain parts of the cultural ethic that I just take exception to. You see what you mean? It, it's just my own inner self. I just take exception to, to it. Yeah. You know, I've even had, you know, the pleasure of telling my parents why I took exception to it. You know what I mean? I don't, if I didn't like some of my parents, you know, visitors or friends or whatever, you know what I mean? I, I used to have a way of getting my father's But can I say something? You just said something. Know. Yeah. You said, I used to have a way. But yeah. there was still a level of respect, wasn't there? Of course, I didn't that disrespect level of anybody. Respect, yeah. But but you know, I didn't necessarily disrespect anybody. But I think one time I did actually voice my absolute dislike of this person, and nobody and nothing could convince me otherwise. And my father, who who like, sort of like studied me from very young, said, "No, no, no. There's something with the child so because if she's reacting like that to yeah. this particular person, what did this person do to the child that we don't know about?" You see, whilst my mother's thing was like, oh, you're disgracing me, you know, society yeah. woman, mm -hmm. you're disgracing me, yeah. all this rubbish. Uh, how can you be doing that in public where I said, well, I don't like this person, I want the person out of my home. Thank you very much. Mm. I and mean, did you leave? yeah. You were quite I lucky because back. I'm sure that if I had voiced that to, I mean, I grew up here and then my parents took me to Nigeria when I was a teenager, but I'm 100% sure. If I had voiced to my dad at one point, and I don't want one of my uncles or aunts in my house, I would have got a good beating. <laughs> well, I would have listened. No, but, okay, guys. So we've looked at that. So you tell me, how do we find a way to prevent our use going into gangs? Because one of the things I look at is that they're looking for something. They're looking for something. They're looking for, they've got this notion in their head that it is a good thing to be part of a gang. Yes. It makes them look like they're on top. Yes. Where are, for them to be in a gang, they're going to hang around with these kids, with other kids in the gang. So that means, are you being 100% sure about where your kid is or where your child is going to in the evenings after school? Because to me, that is one time when gangs form properly because, yeah, they might make the connection in school, Mm -hmm. But then after school is the time that they are together unsupervised and they can get up. I mean, you've got stories of 13 and 12 year old gangs, gang raping young girls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no parent mm -hmm. would want to believe. Like, there's actually one story of um, a 13 year old boy along with seven other teenagers gang raped a 11 year old girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah? They were caught on CCTV before the CCTV came out. When the first, when the police first arrested the boy, the mother said, "Not my son. You've got the wrong person." Mm -hmm. And then she went to church to go and start praying about it. Not mm -hmm. my son. These people are trying to spoil the name of my son. They want to ruin my son's life. It's not true. It's not going to happen. Yeah. And then the CCTV evidence came out, and when the CCTV evidence came out, they forced him to do it. Well, some people, what do you some, say about some, such a parent? Some mothers, some mothers really genuinely want to convince themselves they detach from reality. The thing is, the most important thing in children, never mind just IQ to be ac academically brilliant or whatever, actually EQ is more important. Yeah. Emotional quotient is more important than IQ. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So you have to know, that's why I said you have to know what you have in the house. You need to know what your child yes, is actually doing. Because, yeah, because if your child is displaying certain signs of lack of morals or remorse over even the smallest little things, 
you could have a sociopath on your hands in the future. If but you Ingrid, do you know it. something? When you say that, I hear yeah. what you're saying. But there are some kids that go to school with one behaviour and at home they display a total different behaviour. Well, they can. Then, if you can fool your parent, then your parent also has issues. You see no, what I mean? no, 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 no. If you can fool your parent, then your parent has issues because there is no way somebody who lived nine months yeah. with something growing inside of them yeah, yeah, did not observe that individual growing and knowing exactly what they do and what they don't do. No, That's why they say that women... Yeah. I'm going to disagree with you on that one. Let me give you a scenario. There was this lady and um, the ch her daughter never ever answered her back before. Yeah. I even think that the girl is so respective. And then got a phone call from the school. The daughter's rude in school, answering teachers back. She has never answered the mother, yes. the aunties or anybody else back before. Yes. But then she gets to school and she's answering everybody back. Yeah, but you And see. then it's like, at first, the mother said it can't be, not my child. I've never seen her display this type of Yeah, behavior. there is, there is a... And then they yeah. discovered that it was actually true. She was doing yeah, but so what do you say about such a situation? You see, there are so many factors that I think have come to play there. Mm. Um, so there are things like peer pressure, yeah. wanting to show up in front of their friends. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and then again, Kids are also very smart. They know Thank sometimes you. they know where to, you know, yeah. where the boundaries are. Yes, they know that there are certain things that their parents, you know, would not allow. Would not tolerate. Yeah. You know, um, I give an example of um, my son and his older brother. Yeah, mm -hmm. and even part of the question I was asking him because he was saying that, um, you know, his brother was telling him to go and put something in the bin, and he was saying that. Well, his brother was closer to the thing, so why did he tell him to go and put it in the bin? <laughs> so and I was now saying that if it was I or your mom that told you to go and put that thing in the bin, would even though we're closer us? to it, would you question us? Exactly. He said, no. And he said, you know, yeah, yeah, because you're my parent. And I said, well, he's your brother. And he's your older and he's brother. All your older brother. So again, there's a cultural thing in there. Yeah. And I think, obviously, they need to sort of appreciate that difference. Again, Britain doesn't necessarily emphasize on that. You have a situation where even a young kid will probably call a 70-year-old by their first name, show disrespect, they can yeah. afford to throw stones at them or whatever. So those are some of the issues that I think are, are coming to play here. Femi, you say that, but I remember as a child growing up, we dare not call um, any of my mom's friends, you know, be them white, black, Asian by their names. It always had to be auntie or uncle something mm -hmm. but then we'll have you know a lot of you know uh other kids from different from other countries from the uk and let's see my mom hi vicky mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Phew, well i couldn't do that so that i you see i don't see that as part that has always been there and then mm -hmm. we didn't have the kids in gangs you would we didn't even know about gangs mm -hmm. but then i think the whole story of gangs came from america yeah. You have this culture come from America. And I don't know, I might be wrong, mm. but I think part of me feels that from my experience that um, a lot of kids that came to this country as refugees took part in the war as child soldiers and that played a role into them getting into gangs and kind of encouraged other kids to join gangs as well. I don't know, I might be wrong there. To the extent that a child who has been involved in a violent situation, um, so whether it's in terms of you know, abuse, whether it's in terms of war and so on, there's a good likelihood that that child um, you know, could be affected, would be affected by the scars yeah. and that could take them, you know, that could determine the way they behave. Yeah. But I wouldn't necessarily want to believe that you know, it's actually uh, these children, for yeah. example, that are, that are probably the initiators of yeah. the so-called um, gang violence. Yeah. Mm. You know, because again, you have how? children. Okay, um, look at the case of um, you know the the Adebola girls. Although um, there's a limit to what I can say, so that uh, we don't run um, against the law. But the, the the bottom line is that this is a guy that came from a Christian family, someone yeah. who used to mm -hmm. go to church. church he yeah. wasn't necessarily mm -hmm. in a war scenario. No, he um, wasn't. He didn't really have. Uh, well, we're not aware that he that there was much of a violent um, household 
for you and so on. Can I say on. I actually I I actually met the mother and I know some people that personally know the mother. Um and I think one thing that somebody that actually knows the family quite close said to me is the sad thing is the police are keeping out of this whole thing is the fact that the guy, you know, there's always been a drug issue going on. Mm. There's always been problems here or there. And I remember the press even did say about him dropping out of university. And, you know, when you're going to have drugs, I guess when you think about it, way back in Africa, well, in Nigeria where I come from, let me talk about, because that's mm. what I know. Drugs are not accessible to teenage. Well, I don't know. I never ever. It might be. To, well, maybe not know. so much of drugs, but I know that even weed. in my own secondary school, exactly. My weed own is accessible. Days, yeah. There were things like you know weed and so on and so forth. Yeah. So, but I think the key thing that we need to emphasize there is that in the case of those guys, yes, drugs, but it started from somewhere. It started, it started from, from him from behaving. Him. But from a, you from know, him peer pressure, badly, yeah. being part of a gang, mm. and don't forget that there's so many reasons why people will join a gang. Some will join, yes, please. peer pressure. You, Some yeah, will join because them, they've please. been bullied. You know, they're actually being bullied, to and join they feel like the only way to defend themselves is by being part of a gang. Yeah. You know, so those are some of the factors that actually, you know, are at play here. Can you mention some some more of the facts? Because I think it's nice for people to know what those factors are, and also if we can even look at some of the signs that can show that your child could be in a gang. So if we can look at some of the factors first, what do you think some of those factors are? You see, even the word gang um, is like a, you know, it's probably like a, almost like an extreme word. Where you have a situation where two, three people are coming together to actually do something against yeah. someone, yeah. I think that is beginning to show the traits of, you know, people ganging up, so to speak. You know there was what? a situation where um, some students, um, you know, in my in my kids' um, school, you know, one of my uh, daughter, well, my daughter, and you know, there was this group of friends that now all decided to sort of um, start having a go at this other girl, but everything was done on the BlackBerry, cyberbullying. Cyber mm. yeah. Now, before you know it, um, in fact, they were actually now threatening, you know, that um, they were going to beat up this girl and so on and so forth. That's already a gang. That you know, if you're exactly. really going to look but at it, but this is what we were saying before. Sense. Don't forget. Unfortunately, and sadly enough, I've heard that females can be more vicious than the guys, than the boys, which is really sad. Yeah, you know, um, you know, ladies are, you know, they're very good at what they do. You know, so sometimes now it's going to go there, but. You, but you know, Edith, think, do you want to respond to that? Because I refuse to. <laughs> no, don't worry, I was only fooling your legs, you know. <laughs> no, but the point, um, the point to be made here is that sometimes when you look at um, females, there's the innocent look, you know, sometimes. The hormones in the background. And so, on. so sometimes there are things that you wouldn't necessarily expect yeah. that, um, you know, um, females would do. Don't forget as well that there have been situations where a guy is trying to get through to another guy and sometimes they actually use females. There was that, um, and that was another African killing, wasn't it? There was that one, I think the guy was from Ethiopia. It, it, it was some Eritrea thing. or something. Mm -hmm. And the guy, that's it, he used the girl mm -hmm. to lure the boy to the flat and they killed him. Teenagers mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. So it's like African teenagers again. And it's like, why are our African youth... You know, somebody said to me, and this was one of the comments that I got, somebody inboxed me some pointers, and they were like, how about, you know, economy is bad, parents are working hard, parents have a folk, a lot of parents are out there working as many hours as they can because they need to pay a mortgage, they need to build a house in Africa for them to retire and go back to. Um, they, um, you know, they're in competition also to look good, so they're spending less hours at home and then come Saturday they've got parties to go, come Sunday they've got church to go and they end up spending less time with these kids. The kids are spending more time on their own and a lot of them are being parented by the internet or yeah, getting their information by, by the internet. But that yeah, was just a suggestion yeah, that somebody made, but, I, you know... Really it's a very valid, um, a very valid point, uh, yeah. no doubt. But again, I wouldn't necessarily say that that probably accounts for uh, the majority of situations, not that I've conducted any statistics yeah. to that extent. But what I, what I really believe is that it's a combination of factors. There are, 
there are different reasons uh, for different children yeah. falling into you know such um, you know categories of uh, gang violence. But I think it's also important that obviously as parents. Yes, um, we need to work, we must keep body and soul together, yeah. but it's also about, um, you know... Um, there has to be a balance. There has to be a balance, mm. uh, you know, um, and, you know, do you really know what your, your kid is up to? And even when they're on the internet, you'll be surprised that there's even a lot more that can, that can be happening on the internet, even than when they're actually outside the home. I think a lot of parents forget that the internet is actually a world on, on its own. And it's like that stuff that you try and shield your child from physically and emotionally. Actually, they get on the internet and you think, oh, they're in the four walls of the building. They're fine. They're not mm. if they're on the internet. Because one, it's like nowadays we give our kids BBs, you know, sorry, uh, mobile phones very quickly. We're very quick to give them tablets. I mean, I'm guilty. But I've I've taken mine off my kids after I got one month after I gave it to them they lost it and they're now mine. Mm -hmm. But you know we give them phones, we give them tablets, we give them access to the internet. If you're in the house, you've had a hard day at work. Kids are quiet. They're on the internet. Hello, life is easy. They're at home. They're not going anywhere. Yeah, but, but they could be doing there, a lot. There has to be a balance. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean you can't oh, you sorry. can't keep blaming the internet or you know those games that they have you know playstation and whatever when oh, you play yeah. resident evil or whatever Do it depends what? on the emotional state it of the i'm sorry but yeah. i say that those games when it comes yeah. to the internet yeah i do put a lot of blame when i put blame on the internet i'm not putting the blame on the internet i'm saying parents need to reduce the access that the kids have to the internet because a lot of kids i've seen a lot of kids spend a lot of time like on youtube there's a whole lot of stuff on YouTube. And like Femi was just saying now, cyberbullying is a big major thing. Gangs, a lot of gangs communicate through their mobile phones. So it's like, I think there was one boy that was murdered, another African child. Um, do you remember? The brother tried to save him. I've forgotten his name. But messages were sent via BB. It was like, meet us here. And that's how the gang met together, and that's how they ended up killing the boy. So I think that the internet does play a large role in their communicating with it. It does play it's not a the role, cause, but it, plays it does a role. play a role because it facilitates communication. But what, yeah. I, what I'm actually saying is that the content of the internet or PlayStation or Xbox 360, whatever it is, yeah, doesn't necessarily change the state, the mental state I think a lot of, parents, of a moral person. There is a lack of morals in there is a lack of morals in the society in which we live. Why well, actually anyway, disagree with you? Because it's actually it's it's actually too liberal. It can change. Africa is more reserved. We're more we are the world's oldest society and culture anyway, to be honest with you. So we still have those little reserves where we have this communal thing where you know you know the neighbors, 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 they know your children. So you can even leave your mansion, go to the market, your children are in there, you know that one of your neighbours is keeping an eye on those kids anyway, you don't need to ask. And if the children do misbehave, you know that one of your neighbours is going to go and intervene and even smack the kid on your behalf. So by the time you come back, they will tell you that your kid did this, I had to smack them for it, and then you smack them again. <laughs> you see what you mean? But then you say that, that, but I think you say that, but I think that Asian culture are doing quite well. I think they're doing a bit better than us because they're still holding on to that communal living culture. There is still that level of respect as in, oh, my auntie lives down the road. Oh, so, so, better not see me. I yeah, think they but, still have but that and I just think it's just too, too simplistic to always blame electronic equipment. You see what I mean? Because, I mean, if you have internet in your house and you have your children there, excuse me, I will tell you that, listen, my friend, you use the internet at school there for about four or five hours. You are here, you've got only two hours. Do your homework. After that, shut it down. But wait, let's hear what Femi wants to add. Yeah, but, let's hear what Femi's going to add to that. Um, there's a point at which I disagree with you. There's no doubt about it that the internet does have some form of influence. Not necessarily in every case, but in some cases, um, on the way it one behaves. It, plays a role. it yeah. does play a role. Mm. Uh, because, for example, if a child is so used to watching 
maybe or playing a violent game or playing um, or you know watching a violent violent film. Films, yeah. You know that that child begins to you know begins to and believe act. that that is the way of life. Yeah. I had a situation where my you know one of my sons and even then even as young as maybe about four five six years old you know maybe we went to one of the theme parks and so on and wanted to buy souvenirs and you know uh, bought um, a, a toy gun yeah. you know a toy gun you know water gun and then obviously it got to a point where I was just reflecting that hang on a minute when you start teaching a child you know from that age to start using the toy gun and then That's you know safe. you go out to another um, theme park or to another outing they're now going, they don't want the water one anymore, they now they want, want the something. Big, the ones with pellets in there. You, you know, then you, you, you have to watch it because then once they're so used to having toy guns, when they now, if they have the they opportunity have of having them. the real thing, you know, they, they've got the misconception that they've got a toy gun, toy gun in their hands. Do you oh, know what? I know, I know Edith doesn't agree with I, I just think that is but I'll tell dash you. and poppy cop. No, no. That is I, no, absolute no. nonsense Edith, and disagree. rubbish. No. But you're, uh, no, excuse me. That's <laughs> absolute nonsense <laughs> and rubbish. And I take the deepest offence. No, That's it. Edith, it's just reality, reality though. It's, it's, it's not reality. reality. It's not reality because I'm one of those children Edith. who had a gun, even not those guns that they have today. No, Edith. Don't had, get me wrong. You know the ones with the patterns Edith. where that Don't makes get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I am yeah. not saying my, that. Yeah, my, my brother and I, we had one from the age of war. I was three years old. My brother was five. You, we had one. We used to play cowboys and Indians with it. We did not grow up to be murderers or serial no, killers. You're missing the, okay. you're missing the point I'm making. Yeah. The point I'm making, I'm not necessarily saying that everybody who has Every a toy yeah. gun would now turn out to be violent. But what I'm saying is that there have been cases and there are some cases where children, you know, the violence that they like see on the act. internet, yeah. some, you know, whatever they're used to from a younger age may go with them into adult life and reflect on the way they I behave. I used to see John Wayne and Toto you know, shoot people all the time. You understand? No, I never was... wanted to go to school to go and shoot Edith. the people who were trying to bully me. Edith, but there were some people you that were not. Edith. No, no, no. Oh. It depends. That's why I said that the e EQ of your child is very important. Edith, can I just so say you something? must know your child. No, no, no. Do you know what? I will stick by what I said. Any parent that believes that they know their child into, into, are usually the ones that are actually giving their child the opportunity to fail. Because you need to remember that your child is an individual with a mind of their own. I sit down and I say, and I can remember very clearly, when I was in um, school, and I could remember there was this um, boy, bless him, I don't know what it was, but he just got on my nerves, and every now and again I'll do something to annoy him. And then my teacher reported me to my mum, and... Um, I got home, my dad and mum punished me, beat me, and I claimed and I swore to God I was innocent. And my mum was like, you know what? Now I know my child very well. If she had done this thing with this beating that we've given her, she would have confessed by now. <laughs> hey, she never done it. And in my own mind, I'm thinking, whoa, I've done it. They believe me at last. <laughs> when I got back to school, I told the boy, you're in trouble. <laughs> we've just started on a higher level. And my mum now called the teacher, I told the teacher, look, I'm really sorry, I think you need to talk to this boy because I don't think my daughter is doing this. But it is... I'm not saying that your mum no, is no, a bad mum, no, no, but I'm saying that maybe... No, no, I'm not no, saying no, it. About no, 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 that's not what I said. I said, I'm not saying that your mum is a bad mum. I'm just saying my mum didn't she, know me 100%. Yeah, she didn't know you. You see what I mean? But me, I'm the type of person that I can guarantee you I know my child 100%. Me, I don't not know even mine. a psychologist can tell me you see, anything you new see, about my child. You see, with I'm me, that sort of person. That, that, you know, and I have to respect your views, but I believe that I know my child to a certain extent. Yeah. yeah. And I know that my child will throw me surprises as life goes on. I just pray they are nice surprises. <laughs> and... But within me, mm. I just want to make sure that I'm installing the right values. What is it? Values mm. and beliefs within that child's head, bless her, or the yeah. two of them. But I don't know what tomorrow could turn up because I don't know who they're going to be meeting with. 
I don't know who's going to influence them, but I will try my hardest to influence them for as long as possible. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. And I just have to respect the fact that they are individuals and at some point of time they're going to, and especially within the UK, I think when I was back in Nigeria, my father had a whole load of control around me. And so, you know, I wanted to do this when I left um, secondary school, but <laughs> it was, you ain't doing that. You're living in my house and there was no facility there for me to move out of his house. So mm -hmm. I had to abide by his rules. But I have to accept the fact that I brought my kids to the UK and so they're going to reach that certain age that I reached, or even before I reached it, and they're going to be wanting them to do their own thing. And because of the laws of the land, there's nothing I'm going to be able to do apart from try and steer them out of that. Is it and all of us, I think, most parents are stuck in that situation. Unless you, you have a child so, that is an, some unless you have a child are, that is a, and some a genius are, but and goes... And, but you know what? So I wouldn't want a child, control. but you know what? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't want a child that is going to go every step that I want them to go. Does that make sense? Yes, I, know I what want you mean. them that to have a bit like a sheep. Uh, yeah. yeah, I want them to also have their own head of their own. Yeah. To have their own individuality yeah. as a child. And that's one thing that this country teaches. In yeah. terms of the fact that, yeah. they, you know, right from a young age, they, you know, they teach you to be independent. To have a mind of your own and so on, which exactly. is good, but it just needs to be applied in but the positive how, direction. And that is how we as parents within our African everything culture, needs to have a balance. In, yeah, yeah, we, everything needs to have a balance. That. But I was eight years old when my parents didn't have direct influence on me because I was sent to boarding school abroad. But it was the same with my brother. You see what you mean? How do you so think this that was the time. You? That was the time when I could have cried freedom and done whatever I wanted to do. I was in boarding school with all these white people. But can I say but something? It, yeah. You had love and respect for your parents, didn't you? Of course. And that is what held it together. So yeah. I think that there is an importance that people need to look at and realize that, you know what, we're thinking a lot of our African youths are getting into gangs and that. So in the, we as parents, we need to step back and we need to reevaluate. Is that the right word? Yeah. Reevaluate our parenting skills. Yes. Reevaluate the way we communicate with our kids. I think the reason why some some African parents lose their way with their kids within the UK is because they don't think of how they can apply their own parenting skills to the rules of the country. They, you know, it's. Does that make sense? I, I, I see where you're coming from, but I don't know because my parents didn't have that particular difficulty. Okay, fair enough. Maybe some people who knew my family would say I was born, born silver spoon, so I was privileged. Yeah. But that privilege did not prevent my parents from smacking me when they needed to smack yeah. me. Yeah. You, you see what I mean? My, my parents traveled a lot when I was growing up. I mean, they traveled a lot and they took us just about everywhere. I mean, there wasn't a country I could live in for a year and tell you that I've maintained the same friendship. You were lucky I was left at I, home. You, you I suited me. So, so, so eventually it came to a point where we just look. I had to look at my dad and I said to him, you know what, your job might be very interesting and all this, dad, love you and everything, but this is not going to work because what's getting on my nerves is the fact that I have to sit down and apply myself to write letters but you're to lucky. friends that I left behind. I'm telling you, I don't know. I think African countries are very different. I think there are very few Nigerians that can turn to their parents and say, hey, Dad, you're travelling a lot. Boy, you need to sit yourself down. <laughs> <or we> <laughs> <laughs> I tell no, you what, I mean, you won't I be was, sitting down for the next one week. I was, <laughs> no, no, but you see what you mean. I was, okay, maybe I was lucky because I was my father's first daughter. So yeah. I was the second child. Yeah. My brother was the first, yeah? But he could see the fed up look in our eyes that every time, you know, you've just made a friend and then suddenly you're uprooted we're going somewhere else. And, it's that, like, and then when yeah. they'll try and do the old fashioned things like, oh, today is Sunday, why don't you, after church, why don't you sit down and write a letter to your friend you left in Germany? Yeah. And it's like, please, do you know how old I am? Then? Yeah, that was like I'm five or six. What? You know what I mean? I don't have too much time to be doing all day. I remember, I, that... I remember I had my first pen pal. Yeah. You know, this was days before <laughs> the internet. Yeah. At the age of um, 12, and my father read the letter. I oh, think okay. I got it through school. Yeah. I found it in a magazine. Got yeah. it through school. Hmm? You're interacting with another child. Bring the letter. Let me read it. Yeah. Okay. 
You can write back, but when you finish writing it, bring it. Let me see it before you see it. <laughs> <laughs> and then after you seal it, yeah. After you, after he's read it, he will put it in an envelope and post it. You and I show you I don't know. Well, I did get a reply. I got a few replies back. Okay. So he did. And then it. I so he did post yeah. it. But my, so you were you were kind of um you were the kind of um you had an easy kind of. Should I say I, that? I Is wouldn't that even right say word? I was easy because if you knew my parents, my mother was slap happy. My mother has no patience, even till today. She's yeah. in the seventies. She has no patience. Play the fool and she will cure you. That's my mom. Mm. Whilst my father was more like withdrawn, didn't talk too much, you know, and he liked to reason with you. Mm. And I remember when my father would, the few times my father was around, yeah. he, his thing was like, in the morning, no chauffeur will take you to school. He will take you to school. And it was inside the car. And my father, as he's driving, he's talking to us about our days, asking us like what happened last night when he got home because we were already in bed or some rubbish. And then after that, he will start giving us some wisdoms. Yeah. And at first, you used to think, what's that man talking about? What kind of nonsense is that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Why is yeah. that? And then as we grew up, I suddenly got the message that my father was trying to, and I, I'll tell you one thing, one thing that impacted me the most about my father, I remember when I was six years old, my brother was eight, my brother did something in school, my father was not a happy man, and for my father to be ticked is that you, you've done it, you yeah. see what I mean, because with my mother it was very easy, wear a pair of trousers the wrong way, <laughs> Yeah, to me. That was it. You know, that's that was all that. You see, me. Now, that was really my mum. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do your calculus wrong. You know, you dad get dad one. Wrong. Yeah. So my father was like, he was not a happy man at all. So one day he just, when we were sitting in the car, he was driving us to school. He said to my brother, "Listen, the money I have made, yeah, is my money." I suffered for it, I worked hard for it, and I afford you the privileges of, of that using money. it. <laughs> yeah? yeah? Do not assume that the day I die, you are entitled to that money. He said, no, 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 it's not going to work like that. Because I worked for it and I suffered for it. I am entitled to decide who I leave it to when I go. And that may be, that may be the difference with the African culture. For here, how many kids are going to give a damn if you say to them, I'm not leaving my house to you, when they know that they can go and get their own council flat anywhere and they can go and get their own benefits if they decide not to work? Yeah, plus, the, when plus, there's not enough mm -hmm. tax planning, that inheritance gap could actually now yeah. end up being a liability. Well, half of it, exactly. The government is going to take half of it. But you know what? Mm -hmm. Focusing on these uh, African... Um, Kid, African teenagers and gangs. Guys, let's round this off with thinking of ways that parents can prevent their kids falling into this such a situation. I think it's important to um, emphasize that one needs um, a bit of wisdom. And when I say wisdom, wisdom from God himself. Yeah. You know, to be able to actually make sure that the children are going in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, people need to be educated and informed. And what I mean by that is, um, just like you identified earlier on in this program, um, there are certain things that parents are allowed to do. There are certain things that parents are not allowed to do. Um, parents also need to be creative. Don't let the fear factor hold you back. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and then parents also need to be creative. There are ways in which you can actually discipline a child without necessarily going physical, that will probably even be a lot more effective. Than because what you find out is that many a times, and, and this is something that I believe even happens so much in Nigeria, where, for example, uh, where children were, were so used to being beaten when they got into trouble. It now got to a point whereby some ch children were smart enough, if they knew they'd done so, they had done something wrong, they themselves were already prepared. Well, the king so became your friend, isn't it? So it's like, all right. One, <laughs> let's number two, some would even wear about two, three um, yeah, little trousers. <laughs> so like, even when the beating is uh, going on, they're so they'll it. pretend as if you know yeah. it's actually having an impact when it's not. Exactly. Whereas if you're creative, 
you know, you're always... They never steps. know what to expect. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, so... There, and then um, the issue, I think one or two... Talk to your kids a lot. Communication. Absolutely. Very good Absolutely. And study them. Watch yeah. them. Be mm-hmm. observant. Mm-hmm. You know, because there could be little, little traits that are already beginning to show in that child that, you know, should, should be like um, an alarm, alarm bell ringing. Do you know what? When you say that, when Femi says that, I think there's another important thing parents need to do. When you see your kids interacting in place like parties mm. or other kids, You'll step be. back as yeah. a parent. Don't always rush in. As soon as you see something going on, you know some parents are very quick to say, can you stop that? No, don't do that. Watch your child because your child is sometimes in a mold that they've forgotten that you're there watching them. Mm-hmm. They're in a world with their peer groups and they get on with it. And you can see the true reaction of your child. Yeah. So you know what that child can do. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. yeah. Okay. Edith, anything to add to that, darling? Not really, but you, you need to communicate with your children anyway. So it's good to let your children talk sometimes about their day, what they've been up to, yeah. because from there you can suss things out anyway. Mm-hmm. And women have a sixth sense, yeah. a sense of intuition, because sometimes it's the woman that will tell the husband, do the picking, don't do something. No, 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 oh, no, but the child has been here not doing anything, you know, that sort of thing. Because yeah. men can be quite oblivious. Oh, bless mom say, No, 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 my six sense is telling me. My it's six because sense. women, you know, are more yeah. open minded and, you know, my six unlike sense is telling me that that child. We'll put one and one together today, you know. Yeah, you know, so there you go. Oh, God. Women should always listen to their intuition, never overlook it. Because yeah. you will know what your child is or mm. is not. You know mm. what I mean? Yeah. I had a cousin who was completely paranoid, neurotic about her children. Any time you said anything about her children, no, they were innocent and everything. Oh. And I remember I used to watch my nephew growing up. So eventually one day, you know, because every time she used to go on that, all the teachers, the white people, they're trying to slow down this growth, they're coming up with nonsense. My yeah. cousin was completely convinced. And then one day, finally, I decided to speak. And I said to her, listen, has it ever occurred to you that my nephew is and she uh, looked at she me. She'd been like my child. What did she, she mean by my she child? She looked at like? me. She said, yeah. Because she used to get banned. She used to get banned from play groups, from schools, <laughs> everything. So they used to even <laughs> beg the husband that if we, have parents, child, no, if we have parents meeting, can you take an hour off work and come? Because and your wife is un- unreasonable. So when I said it to my cousin, I think it's the way in which I said it, because I was completely relaxed about it. I just said to her, has you ever occurred to you that my nephew is alive? So she looked at me and she said to me, I have to go to the school now. What do you mean is a liar? I said, that boy is lying. I know um, I've observed that boy and my instinct is telling me that no, mm. it's not a black and white thing trying to slow down this group. He's guilty of something. So yeah. when we went to the school, because I'm one of the, apart from my husband, I'm the only person who can keep her calm and reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. When we went to the school, lo and behold, when finally conversations <laughs> was allowed, she realized that you know what, yeah, all this was rubbish. Not as innocent exactly, as she thought, it was yeah. not as innocent. Oh, you know, that's... but she constantly gets herself in these situations. Yeah. I mean, for God's sake, she's got five boys, and with each of them, we've been through a journey. Wow. Because there's always that ne- neurotic thing that no, my child is an angel. He can't be him. He, he hasn't done. He can't be doing. He can't yeah. be thinking. He can't be doing this. I said to her, listen, from the age of five. They're flipping liars. <laughs> That's when they start. We're going to close it with that. Yeah. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you so much. Oh, do you know what? I hope people have learned something from this. I hope that it's brought some awareness about, you know, different ways of looking after our kids, preventing mm-hmm. them from falling into that terrible hand of gangs. Because, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. I think that a number, a majority of the kids that actually fall into gangs fall in because of their weakness, not because mm. they're yeah. strong as well. So it's not only the strong, it's also the weak that fall into those situations. Mm. Um, I'm going to say a big, massive thank you to my two wonderful, lovely guests <laughs> this evening, Femi. Thank you, Susie. Thank you so much, Edith. Uh, thank you. And thank you to our viewers. Um, I hope you guys got a lot out of this. Thank you to our production team. And good night to everyone and see you next week. Bye. Mm -hmm.